when you allow yourself to pray in the spirit, your, your spirit man is being trained to commune with the Holy Spirit. Say amen. You see, a lot of people do not know how, he, how the Holy Spirit functions. Your spirit man is being trained. Now, let me tell you this. When you key into the spirit, who does the speaking? Paul was writing in 1 Corinthians 14. He said, when I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, my understanding is unfruitful. In other words, my spirit is now doing the praying because it's energized and enabled by the Holy Spirit, but my understanding is unfruitful. Now, what normally happens is that when your spirit is trained to listen and commune with the Holy Spirit, he will now enlighten your mind. Can I hear an amen? He will do what? Your mind. That's why words of knowledge, word of wisdom, they come like a thought. I thought I would tell somebody that. They don't come out of, you know, any external jingoism. They come like a thought. It just drops in your mind. And you know, wow, that's a strange one. That is when you have energized, trained your spirit man to commune with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost can drop things in your spirit. And your spirit is very much in touch with your mind. It just unveils your mind to knowing things that you never knew before. That's all. That's why some people will hear the word of God. And the revelation they will get from that word will be much more than an average person. Why? Because they've been engaging their spirits in talking to God, the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost can now enlighten their minds using the scriptures. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody? Your spirit is being trained. Do it often. The training is so good. Because it, this ties into the message of today, by the way. That's why I'm saying it. Because the training is so necessary for you and I. It's like when an athlete trains his muscles. They are being trained to a certain level of proficiency so they can function at a certain level. Same thing with the spirit. Say amen. That's why Stephen did not look down. He looked up. Why? His spirit had been energized. He was not thinking, oh God, why did you let this happen to me? Why I've served you all my days? Why is the church abandoning me now and I'm being stoned to death? He wasn't thinking like a normal human being. Paul says it, you are thinking like mere human beings. He was thinking spiritual thoughts. He looked up to heaven and he saw Jesus standing by the right hand of the Father. Even then, well, that was even a revelation, a, a breaking open of the vision of heaven over his life. Say amen, somebody. So, I want you to know your spirit is being trained. Then, another word thing here is you do eternal damage to the kingdom of darkness. People don't know that. You do eternal damage to the kingdom of darkness. You see, because the kingdom of darkness cannot penetrate that private prayer line. So, they can't understand. It's when the effect of it is coming that they see it. That's why. Let me give you one key. I told somebody that before. If you are having insomnia and you can't sleep, start praying in tongues. Satan will ensure that you sleep. Because he knows if you continue, you will do damage. <laughs> I've noticed that. You, you, you just mingle kustavara, you just sleep off. <laughs> You're not praying to sleep, but the enemy knows that if this one keeps talking, it will do damage to my kingdom. So give him any demon responsible for lack of sleep. Take it away from him. Let this one sleep quickly. <laughs> That's why sometimes you need to stand up when you pray in tongues. Say amen. You do damage to the kingdom of darkness. Now, another point here is that it helps activate other gifts of the spirit in you. Say amen. Other gifts of the spirit. You see, people will bring out points in the Bible, like 1 Corinthians 14 or 12, 12 when it says, do all, uh, do, if you speak in tongues and you can't interpret, what good does it do to the church? Let me help you. Because uh, a lot of times the arguments come from the Bible too that not everybody should speak in tongues. And when we speak in tongues, we should not do it publicly. Now listen to this. The first thing you must understand is this. When you speak in tongues, you're not speaking to man. You're speaking to who? God. So that's why it is when I'm holding a microphone and trying to talk to the church and I'm speaking in tongues, that is when I need to interpret it so you can edify them. But when I'm leading in prayer and I'm praying to God, I can speak in tongues. Say amen. Okay, so if you want to activate other gifts of the Spirit in your life, praying in tongues is one. Now, Paul was saying in 1 Corinthians 14, he said, I pray that all of you should prophesy. Shall I give you the easiest way to understand the word prophecy? From the same 1 Corinthians 14, he said, anyone who prophesies speaks to people to edification, comfort, and exhortation. What does that mean? When people come out to give testimony, what do you think they're doing? They're exhorting have you noticed that every testimony we have had so far, the people will say, 
I want to encourage those of you who are going through this not to. Is that not true? That's an exhortation right there. So their testimony carries the spirit of a prophecy. Say amen. See, many times when we hear prophecy, we think in terms of predictive prophecy. That if you hear a prophecy now, is that somebody says, God says the Lord, this will happen to you. That's what we call prophecy. But what the Bible calls prophecy primarily is words that are inspired by the Spirit of God to exhort, to comfort, and to edify. Can I hear an amen? That's found in 1 Corinthians 14. Words to exhort, to comfort, and edify. Those are the basis upon which prophecies, or the word prophecies said. So when Paul was saying, I encourage you all to prophesy, he was saying that when we stand up or when we have the opportunity, let us exhort, encourage, and comfort as we are inspired by the Spirit. Can I hear an amen? So you cannot do that speaking in tongues to them. However, when you speak in tongues, the Holy Ghost can give you interpretation. Say amen. It can give you what? For instance, if somebody opens their mouth and says, Oh, thus says the Lord, I am here in your midst. That's an encouraging word. That's a prophecy right there. Say, Amen. I am here to do you good. I am here to heal. I am here to... So, an inspired utterance like that is a prophetic word. But people think only of prophecy in terms of prediction. Predictive prophecy is in the office of a prophet. Can I hear an Amen. Now, let me encourage you. You see, all of us should pray in tongues, but not all of us necessarily operate prophetic gifts or gifts and tongues and interpretation. All of us can minister, exhort, disciple, teach, but not all of us are called into the office of a teacher. Am I talking here? All of us can evangelize, but not all of us are called into the office of an evangelist. So also, all of us can prophesy, but not all of us are called into the office of a prophet. In fact, if you, the truth be known is that all these apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, their job is to activate in every believer the dimensions that they carry. Did you catch that? In other words, if you sit under a prophet, you should activate the prophetic dimension in you. If you sit under an evangelist, you should activate the evangelistic dimension in you. Why? Because Christ who gave the gift is the same Christ you received. So all those dimensions are latent in you. They are there, but they are not activated. Say amen. The fact that they get activated does not now mean that you have been called into the, all the offices. It just means you are now fully functional as a believer. Can I hear an amen? You see, the greatest anointing is actually the believer's anointing. That's what people don't understand. All these are like professors in the, in the, in the, in the university. You know, apostles. They are like teachers, lecturers. Their job is to impart what they carry into the church so the body of Christ can now function. If somebody is, an, is a businessman and is activated evangelistically, what will happen is that as he finishes his business discussion with his clients, he will find a way, God will give him the wisdom to bring a thought that will lead to salvation. Why? He has been activated evangelistically. Same way if he's activated prophetically, the, they might be in a business discussion. And he will just give a word and he will say things like, oh, this, the, the situation in your home, how are you going to handle it? And the, the, the client will say, how did you know that? That person has been activated prophetically and that person can function in that place as a, 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 a servant of God, a, a child of God, a part of the body of Christ that has been activated prophetically. And they just use that. And the person says, oh, don't worry, the Spirit of God just let me know. Oh, are you a Christian? Yes. You mean the Spirit? How did he know that? That person has a witness that God has spoken to him through somebody. He leaves that place thinking, my goodness, God is real. He may not get saved that day, but he has, he has said, do you see what I'm saying? So a lot of times we limit ourselves only to church services thinking that if I have a prophetic gift, then I must give a prophecy in the church. Not necessarily. If you have opportunity, please go ahead and do it. But the point I'm making is, is that many of us are limiting the Holy One of Israel because we don't know the things he wants to do through us. Am I talking here? Listen, you can be speaking to somebody and then a word. You, you just, it's not a word like, mm, thus says the Lord. It's just a thought. Everybody say just a thought. Those thoughts can be divine thoughts. Why? Your spirit peaks from the Holy Spirit and enlightens your mind. Wow. Why? The Holy Ghost is your helper. He's your standby. He's your teacher. He's your advocate. He wants to help you. He's your strengthener. 
He wants to help you to succeed in what you're doing. So he gives you the wisdom, he gives you the strategy, he gives you the grace. But a lot of us don't know these things. Why? We've been trained in the natural, so we have not been trained in the spiritual. In the natural, we are t- trained to read books, and it's good. In the natural, we're trained to take principles, and it's good. But we have not been trained in spiritual things, so we don't understand how spiritual things operate. Hello, somebody. So the Holy Ghost is there to help you activate the gifts of the Spirit. Another thing the Holy Ghost does through speaking in tongues, it helps you to quieten your mind so you can hear from God. I don't know if you know many times our minds are busy. When you pray in tongues, your mind is not active. If you can fix your mind on the scripture or something good and you just pray in tongues, you get to a place where your mind is ready to now hear the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. Can I hear an amen? You see, all of us should fellowship. You see, and this is why religion, let me tell you the, most, the greatest counterfeit to the Holy Spirit is a religious spirit. He knows how to take scriptures and twist them. He doesn't use them correctly. Religious spirits are the greatest counterfeit. So when they come and they operate in people, the people feel proud. Anything that takes your faith from you, anything that makes you puff yourself up as if you are something you are not, that thing is a religious spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit. Am I talking here? You are a child of God and you have honor in the eyes of God. God loves you enough to send his son, send his spirit and all of that. But if anything is not making you feel I'm holier than everybody else. I'm too much. That is not the Spirit of God. Say amen. But when you are too much where the devil is concerned, that could be the Spirit of God. (laughs) Amen. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Say loud amen. Now, evidence of being filled with the Spirit is speaking in tongues and it is the key to staying filled. How many of you have had Some hunger stirred up in you to to speak in tongues today. So far, let me see your hands. Okay. Now, those of you who have not been filled, let me tell you how simple it is. Everybody says simple. It's the simplest thing. Number one, know that the Holy Ghost does not do the speaking. You do the speaking. You do what? If I hear that something has been made available to me, how do I receive it? By acting on the word. When I heard, as a new convert, that the Bible says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out the devil, speak with new tongues, they will lay hands on the sick, they will recover. You know what I did? I said, let me go test this thing out. The next time I went home on holidays, I asked my family, is anybody sick here? They said, what happened to you? I said, don't worry, just let me see the sick person. I began to lay hands on the sick because I wanted to see whether the Bible is true. Can I hear an amen? And I want to challenge you to do the same. So when you hear that they can speak in new tongues, then you decide, Lord, I want to speak in new tongues. So we read the example in Acts chapter 2. The Bible says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak. Everybody say, began to speak. Say one more time, began to speak. I was sharing with somebody, I said, what it means is this. How many of you have heard of the priming of a pump before? I've heard of priming of a pump. Why do you prime a pump? And how do you do it? You, <laughs> you, you stir up, you, okay. Now, everyone who is born again, now listen, if you've been born again and you've been living in sin, you need to repent. Say amen. Because some people have been born again, but they live in sin and they think grace has covered them, so they don't need to repent. It's a lie. You need to what? Repentance means a turn around from sin. You can't be living in sin. If, uh, for instance, if a young boy or a young girl is having an affair and sleeping with somebody and comes to church, does it make him righteous? No. You are living in sin. So you need to repent. Not just say, I'm sorry, but stop it. Now, why am I saying that? Because it's important that whatever seed we sow, let's understand we shall reap it. Shall I give you one secret? One of the reasons for great breakups in marriages is having intimacy outside marriage before they came into marriage. Because once you do it, you will lose trust in one another foundationally. When the days of test now come in the marriage, you will have no confidence towards one another, except if you did it as unbelievers. If you did it as a believer, listen, my brother, my sister, you have planted a wrong seed and you need to repent. 
Say loud, Amen. I need to say that clearly because I know young people like living in sin and making it look like everything is fine. It is not. Hello? I said it is what? You can enjoy it for the season. Nobody will notice. But listen, you are planting a seed for your future. And the enemy will make sure that harvest comes in fullness. And when it comes, even you can't stop it. So please, hear me. If you're not believe, if you did it before you were born again, don't, the blood has covered you. Can I hear an amen? But when you are genuinely born again and you live in sin, listen, anything God wants to do in your life, the enemy has a foothold. He can pervert it, he can pollute it, and he can stop things that God wants to do. Let me give you the greatest thing he will stop. He will stop your confidence in walking or serving God. That's what you would do. You would, you, you would want to do it, but inside you, you feel unworthy. Those who don't even fall into sin feel unworthy. Now I'll talk of you. <laughs> so, I'm saying all that to say this, that when you have done your homework and you know the blood has cleansed you from your sins, this is how easy it is to, to receive the Holy Ghost baptism. You just say, Lord, I believe I receive. And right now, I want to speak. And start speaking. But you see, you begin you see, this is how it works. When I begin, then the Holy Ghost, you see, when you are primed the pump, what happens to a pump that is primed? After a while, the water begin to, begins to gush out. Is that not true? So also, when I begin by faith, after a while, the language flows. Say amen. After a while, it now becomes easier and easier. It becomes formed like a language. It becomes real and then it becomes my prayer language, and I can use it at any time. And don't be limited to one particular language. You can have several languages. Say amen. Just flow as the Holy Ghost leads you. Are you ready to receive now? Are you ready to receive now? You see, all can, all can and should pray in tongues, worship, win souls, disciple others, without necessarily becoming one gifted with tongues and interpretation. Or The fact that all of us worship, does it mean all of us are worship leaders? No. The fact that all of us win souls, does it mean we're all evangelists? No. But all of us can do all of these things without necessarily saying we have now become evangelists, we have now become prophets, but that we can function in all these areas. Amen? How many of you would like to receive now? Thank you, ma'am. Let's all stand up. Let's support them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So I want to lead you in a simple prayer. Say this after me. Let's all join them. Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. And God raised you from the dead. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And by the wash and by the blood of Jesus, I have been washed clean. I receive Jesus as my Lord, my Master, my Savior, my Redeemer. Holy Spirit, you have been sent. To be my helper, my teacher, my standby, my strengthener. And Jesus said, out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. And in the book of Acts, as they were filled, they began to speak. Tonight, I ask and receive. The infilling of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I believe that I receive right now in the name of Jesus. And by faith, I will begin to speak. I will begin to speak. Because they were filled and they began to speak. I am filled by faith. Now I want to begin to speak. And I release myself from every sense of condemnation. Every sense of unworthiness. Because Christ has made me worthy. Right now, I receive. My prayer language, the fullness of the Spirit, and I begin to speak in Jesus' name.
Amen. Now lift up one hand to God as I pray. After I say amen, you just flow in the spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that your word will never return to you void. I pray, Father, tonight that everyone who needs to be filled with the Holy Ghost, Lord, grant them this experience, genuine experience of the Holy Spirit, that they be filled with the Spirit of God and begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit give them, gives them utterance. So we thank you for it, and we ask Holy Ghost, fill them up now. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and begin to flow. Mass so praise.